Continuing on with our quest to make your world a more quiet and comfortable place. Uh, today I'm going to discuss uh, uh, noise coming into your home, apartment, condo, townhouse. Uh, from outside, what you can do about that. I'm going to discuss noise within your living spaces. Uh, impact noise from above, uh, noise from beside you, from underneath you and uh, different steps you can uh, take to reduce that. I'm going to talk about uh, your listening experience, a little bit about uh, uh, the sound within your, your home, your, your music, your uh, stereo, your media room, uh, whatever it might be, to how to get the best performance uh, with uh, reverberation levels, echo levels in your room. Uh, using uh, acoustic materials and I'm going to touch on a, a few other things also but uh, anyway let's get started here I'm going to review a couple things first uh, some of you probably have, have not seen the first video so I'm going to review a couple things very quickly here in designing a solution to your noise problem it is best to understand what the issues are uh, what, what what is the noise where is it coming from uh, how is it uh, being transmitted, uh, air or structural? Uh, what's the decibel level? What decibel level would you like in your house? And to get there, uh, the first step is to have some sort of measurements. Uh, you can start with uh, less than $100 for a noise level meter. You can spend thousands of dollars for, a no for uh, this noise level meter, or you can download a, a free app to your smartphone I use the physics uh, toolbox suite which has uh, about a dozen different apps including a sound level meter and a uh, pitch meter uh, as well as a bunch of other fun apps. I am very comfortable when my decibel level in my living space, my condo, is between 40 and 50. Uh, that's usually not the case. I get uh, uh, traffic noise from outside, I get uh, dogs barking, I get uh, hall noise and uh, it's a type of noise that's actually uh, difficult to measure because it, it, it comes quickly and goes quickly. Uh, but you can get an overall feeling for what your decibel level is. DBA, the A designation, is a measurement of how humans uh, hear sound. So if you see DBA, the A st stands for uh, classifying how uh, humans hear sound. Can you attain the quiet that you want? Uh, my brother had a son who was in a rock band, a very loud rock band. Uh, he built a relatively soundproof room in his basement uh, and uh, he could seldom hear them. Uh, from the area that he lived in, the upstairs area that he lived in. So yes, it is possible using the proper materials. The proper installation is just as important as the proper materials. You don't need to know the speed of sound in order to capture it, but it is helpful if you know the frequencies that you're dealing with. Low frequencies are more difficult to uh, block or absorb than uh, the higher frequencies in many cases, not always the case. First we'll discuss uh, sound energy or noise that comes into your house from outside. Uh, uh, sound will uh, come through any place that air can come through. Uh, any gaps around windows, doors, chimneys, uh, wherever. It can also uh, come through structurally. It come, can, will come through your glass windows uh, to varying degrees and, and your walls depending upon the composition of your walls. Now let's talk about uh, materials uh, to use to uh, block or absorb sound. And uh, uh, one of my favorites is mass-loaded vinyl. Uh, MLV uh, generally comes in one pound per square foot. Uh, sometimes you, you can get uh, two pounds per square foot for uh, especially difficult situations. I had stated in my first video that it was generally loaded with barium sulfate. Uh, after some research, I've found out that in the last year or two, most manufacturers have switched to calcium silicate. Uh, and what that does, it, it makes the, uh, the vinyl more dense and uh, also adds limpness uh, to it so that it helps absorb the sound energy. 
It is one of my very favorite uh, choices to use uh, in outdoor applications as well as indoor in your walls, your ceilings, your floors. Acoustablock is one of many manufacturers in the USA and around the world that uh, offer mass load vinyl. It can be used to build a fence such as here. It can be scaled up or down. It can be put into wall sections uh, to help block noise. Uh, you can build uh, uh, enclosures around uh, noise generating units. It's important to allow for airflow for some units. You can do that by uh, uh, leaving a gap uh, at the bottom on, on two sides of the unit. You can also do it by uh, overlapping the sides instead of connecting the sides. Overlap them and don't actually connect them. Leave a, an air gap in between. Uh, that's another possible way to do it. Um, may or may not affect uh, how much noise you're stopping and absorbing. Uh, noise, mass-loaded noise barrier materials often combined with absorptive material also uh, in order to not only block it but absorb it so that you don't reflect it in another direction. If you're building a wall with this or any material, you uh, may be limited by your local uh, building codes. Uh, I know in the U.S. There, there are many laws regarding the height of uh, fences, those types of things, which really limit how much uh, noise you can block. Um, be aware of that. Also, uh, be aware of wind loading. Uh, wind loading, the, the higher you go, the more wind uh, that structure is going to have to bear. Also, your soil types and those types of things. So you don't want a wall falling down on uh, anyone. Before I talk about additional uh, products and designs, uh, let me uh, tell you that uh, the laws might be your best solution. Uh, there's a federal law and uh, most, uh, well, many municipalities have noise control laws. Uh, I did some research here in the Philippines, Manila, Cebu City where I live, uh, has laws about uh, how much noise can be uh, put out uh, at certain times of the, the day and evening. Uh, it doesn't seem that they are enforced uh, very often. It's, it's usually up to a barangay captain to enforce them and uh, barangay being a village within a city and it seems that uh, they don't do much about it. Uh, the karaoke clubs are often given permits uh, before they're giving the okay by the barangays so the barangays haven't even signed off on uh, the karaoke clubs. Several of the jobs that I did in uh, California were the result of threatened uh, uh, lawsuits in, including I think it was the Radisson uh, downtown San Francisco, a uh, couple things like that. The the neighbors were complaining about all the noise being put out by their huge uh, air conditioning systems. Sound barrier and sound absorbing materials are classified uh, by a, a couple different designations. In fact, most materials have uh, have been classified as such. Um, IIC stands for Impact Insulation Class. Uh, that's primarily for uh, floor type applications. STC, Sound Transmission Class. Sound Transmission Class uh, refers to uh, the sound barrier properties of materials. Um, NRC, or Noise Reduction Coefficient, has to do with how well a material absorbs uh, sound, and that has to do with uh, that changes based on different frequencies, uh, as well as uh, how thick a material is. Here's a very general example of NRC, the absorptive values, but it isn't really very accurate because it doesn't tell you how thick uh, the items are. You don't want to or can't build a wall or a... Uh, enclosure so the next step is to start treating the uh, the sources where the noise is coming into your living area. The sound will be uh, airborne or structure borne so we need to start uh, dealing with those issues. Uh, let's start with windows. There are a number of uh, manufacturers of uh, uh, sound rated uh, windows and doors uh, in the USA I'm sure across Europe also in Asia. Um, uh, th this particular one is, is like a window insert. It fits uh, over your present window and uh, offers a f uh, quite a bit of uh, noise attenuation and also helps with uh, thermal sealing. 
Um, here in the Philippines, what I've found, uh, I've looked at many brand new under construction condos also. I have not seen a, a double glazed window anywhere. In fact, uh, uh, most of the windows, even in new construction, uh, have very poor seals around the edges. Uh, and you're going to get the air, heat, as well as uh, noise intrusion uh, through those sources. What I've done is uh, taken some insulating materials and uh, done my own insulating around my windows, around my air conditioning units, around my doors, and uh, I have made a difference uh, with noise infiltration. I highly advise you to uh, uh, purchase noise uh, sound rated materials. Uh, I searched uh, Cebu City of the Philippines uh, high and low and was not able to find it. There are a couple companies in Manila that uh, deal in uh, uh, sound uh, control materials, uh, but I chose to buy off the shelf what I could find here with, uh, with tape and uh, uh, thermal insulating materials. Uh, I even bought some rubber mats that are used on for flooring uh, cushioning uh, to cut up and use around my wider gaps in my doors and windows. Uh, and I've made a, a fairly large difference with that. Um, so sometimes you just deal with what you have. A sound rated door uh, may be necessary or a second door preferably sound rated. Uh, just depends on uh, the configuration that you're working with. We're talking about walls, ceilings, and floors now. I am a big fan of mass loaded vinyl. You can use that in all those applications and we'll get uh, more in depth here shortly. I'm also a big fan of uh, what's called acoustic glue and uh, acoustic uh, caulking. Uh, Green Glue is one of those brands and it's it's a way that we use to decouple uh, one wall surface from the next one to stop the vibration, stop the sound energy from transferring through a wall ceiling or floor. I am also a big fan of uh, Quiet Rock which is uh, one of several uh, sound rated wall boards, uh, gypsum board, uh, plaster board, whatever you want to call it, uh, that can be used in wall. It, they're rated uh, acoustically to deliver uh, better uh, sound absorption and blocking than regular gypsum board. Uh, these people, I think they used to be out of uh, California, San Francisco area, but it looks like they were bought out by a company named Pabco. Uh, anyway, you can usually buy something like that through your uh, local building supply house. Uh, I see that there are three suppliers in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Uh, Lowe's used to carry a brand. I believe Home Depot carries uh, some type of wallboard uh, sound rated uh, made by uh, Owens Corning, I believe. There are dozens of uh, products and methods and configurations to uh, uh, deaden sound. Uh, decoupling is one of the most cost-effective ways and using uh, sound clips and resilient channel uh, in your walls or ceilings uh, is the easiest in, uh, way to do that. And uh, you want to separate one wall, the vibrations, the sound energy from one wall, one ceiling, one floor uh, from that of the next one. This diagram shows uh, mass loaded vinyl, the uh, black material, uh, attached, nailed, or screwed to the studs. Uh, better, better than that would be to use green glue uh, between the stud and the mass loaded vinyl so that you would decouple uh, even more. Uh, then, then you've got noise clips and resilient channel and one uh, a 5 8 inch uh, sheetrock there. Uh, you could then put another layer of uh, green glue on that sheetrock and add another layer of uh, sheetrock and that would uh, give you substantially more noise reduction. You would have to tack the mass loaded vinyl initially to make sure it stayed up while the glue set. Uh, resilient channels uh, should be used in the ceiling area also to help uh, decrease the impact noise that you get from uh, the people above you. This figure shows uh, a resilient channel, a sound rated board, mass loaded vinyl, and wall board. Uh, it doesn't show that uh, the green glue was used there. Uh, there again, I would strongly 
the green glue would uh, add much to this configuration. This figure shows uh, green glue being used on two sheets of uh, wall board but without the resilient clips. I don't know why you would do that resilient clips. Uh, they're going to add so much for their cost. Here's a ceiling application using a resilient uh, channel. Uh, and it's, it's another possibility. There's, like I say, there's dozens of different ways to get essentially the same result. Here we have resilient channel. Uh, looks like uh, ma mass loaded vinyl behind that and uh, sound clips. The application uh, that you choose to apply to your particular situation uh, will, will depend on no, no, num a number of factors, including how much space you have, how much money you have. <laughs> This application, ceiling application, they've got uh, green glue and uh, a wall board up, up in, in between the joists and resilient channel and two layers of wall board with green glue in, in between also. Uh, very good application. In, in I, would, I would have put mass loaded vinyl uh, there right above the resilient channel myself. I just uh, think that it does more for the money than what they've done here, but it would work. Here's three more configurations. A, uh, a double wall with the double drywall and, gre and green glue, a uh, single wall with resilient channel, uh, two sheets of drywall with green glue, and a staggered wall which is another option uh, with two sheets of sheetrock and green glue. Here's a little more detailed uh, uh, layout uh, schematic of uh, some of the decoupling. Uh, you want to use acoustic caulk in, in all corners, uh, especially where the floor uh, meets the walls and where the walls meet the ceiling. Uh, you don't need uh, sound energy uh, transferring through th those areas after you do all the other work so perfectly. You also need to make sure that you're decoupled at the corners. Here we have a uh, uh, basically a staggered uh, floor situation uh, where we're putting uh, mineral wall in between the layers to help uh, take care of the noise and then we're filling the gap with flexible acoustic sealant. Here's another configuration something called a floating floor, a rubber under underlayment, a cement board, a green glue layer, and your OSB subfloor. Um, somebody's going to ask me which method I prefer and it, it really has something to do with, uh, has a lot to do with what you're starting with, uh, what your budget is. Uh, products that are available in your area. Uh, I prefer using mass loaded vinyl. I prefer using acoustic glue and acoustic caulking uh, sealant uh, wherever I can. I prefer using soundboard, uh, whether it's Quiet Rock or some other brand that's rated for sound. Uh, but if <clears throat> if you don't have those available to you, you, you can use uh, the drywall and use a couple layers and use the green glue. This particular application, I believe it was a nightclub in uh, Florida, Miami Beach area possibly, if I remember uh, reading about it. Uh, they've done it a little differently than what I w would have done, but they've made the neighbors happy. Uh, they used uh, fiberglass insulation, and uh, that's probably a, uh, not acoustic uh, fiberglass insulation, but it, it helps. And uh, three layers of uh, sheetrock. And... Uh, green glue in between. So they accomplished what they had to accomplish in a different type of application. And there are there are dozens of uh, manufacturers, dozens of distributors across the US and Europe and Australia and uh, Asia and probably Africa. I don't know anything about Africa, but uh, who have done the testing, who have made set up configurations that uh, they say will work and give you certain results if they're installed properly. Key word being installed properly. And uh, you can choose to uh, uh, look online at those sites and uh, decide for yourself what you want to try in your particular application. You can go with uh, their particular design and materials. Uh, I've tried to give you a brief overview of uh, of, of this situation. Uh, the next step is to look at sound absorption within rooms and that's a little different deal. I've read stories where 
people have spent a few hundred dollars on uh, sound absorbing panels and put them up on their wall hoping that it would just magically absorb the noise from their neighbors and that's just not how it works <laughs> you have to you have to block the noise and uh, the sound absorption helps in the area of echo and what uh, is usually called reverberation time and usually not going to do much in the way of blocking noise and making it a more comfortable living arrangement. So now we have your average uh, living room, uh, media room, uh, entertainment room, uh, whatever you want to call it in uh, your particular area. Uh, you've got your high fidelity uh, phonograph and you've got a nice radio shack uh, radio system going for you. Listen to all that good AM uh, 50s and 60s music. And uh, But you've got a little bit of reverberation going on in your room. Uh, a little bit too much echo. Something just doesn't sound right. Uh, you've spent uh, tens of thousands of dollars on your uh, video and audio equipment. So it's time to spend uh, a couple thousand dollars on making the room sound right. That's where sound, absorb, sound absorption, sound diffusion, uh, bass traps, uh, all that type of thing starts coming in. And we all hear sound differently. So what sounds right to one person won't necessarily sound the best to the next person. But let's talk about that. First of all, make sure that your high-priced uh, Radio Shack sound system is working optimally. And uh, if I have any questions about that, I call on a guy named Catabatic. He's got a YouTube channel, and uh, he's kind of an audiophile. He knows all about that uh, kind of thing. Oh, I've looked at a lot of charts on reverberation. I find this one of the most informative in the way it breaks it down. Um, uh, usually for speech, you want uh, classrooms and such, you want reverberation under uh, one second. Uh, I've done a, a work... Uh, for a number of buildings, a uh, conference room in a very expensive uh, building for one of the cities in uh, California where the, the architect uh, got carried away and uh, their conference room uh, had such a bad sound system that you couldn't understand the person across the table from you. I've uh, done uh, worked on schools, school auditoriums. They now call them uh, multi-purpose rooms because they use them for uh, lunch rooms and a number of other things uh, when they aren't uh, having sports practice. Uh, there again, where the people across the table at lunchtime couldn't understand <laughs> the, the person next to them because the rever reverberation was so great. And uh, it usually entails bringing in a certain amount of sound absorbing materials and placing them strategically. Um, to do that, there is a book that uh, some of you might be interested in. It's called, the book is called Deaf Architects and Blind Acousticians. Uh, sometimes we can't see the uh, forest for the trees, kind of. You know, architects go through a training program where they uh, deal with the sound, but uh, they seem to forget most of what they've, they've learned because they don't often apply it. Uh, I said in video one, I used to do uh, lunch and learns. I'd buy, the, I'd buy an architectural firm or an engineering firm lunch and uh, I would teach them a little bit about this field uh, until I quickly learned that it wasn't profitable to do that. This guy wrote the book uh, primarily because he was appalled at the uh, bad acoustics going on in, in the uh, classrooms at, at schools which uh, really create a learning uh, issue. Here's an example of uh, sound absorbing panels uh, hanging from the ceiling, which is often done. You use them in the ceiling, use them on the walls, uh, various types of applications. Now to figure your reverberation level, uh, there are lots of sites online that have, have calculators that you can plug in your information. You'll need to know the size of your room, the volume of your room, the size of each wall, the size of your ceiling, the size of your floor and what they're made out of. Are they, is it wood, is it tile, is it, uh, do you have windows, all those sorts of things. And you plug those numbers in and uh, the volume of your air and it will give you a relatively accurate reading as to what your re reverberation is presently. And then there are other 
uh, software and calculators that will help tell you how much uh, absorptive material you can put in there. One site uh, in particular that uh, you might use, Oralex.com. Um, they didn't really care to work with people like me as a reseller. Uh, they're, they're catered more to the, uh, the home and studio type user. They've got a, uh, a pretty wide uh, range of products, uh, bass traps, uh, all sorts of acoustic type treatment and uh, calculators to help you figure out uh, the best sounds for your room. Uh, they are not the cheapest by a long shot. In fact, uh, probably one of the more expensive, but uh, it, they've got a good learning base. Uh, I think they've got uh, Acoustics 101 course there you can take also. There are a couple areas of uh, noise control I didn't cover. One of them is, is automotive or, or vehicle uh, sound absorption, vibration isolation. Uh, that's a whole special area, and there are websites and uh, manufacturers that uh, deal in just in that. There are YouTube channels that will show you how to do it yourself to apply the uh, vibration and noise damping materials to your vehicle. This is a diagram of uh, the Lexus, I believe, with seven layer insulation uh, and a list of their vibration and sound deadening uh, procedures there. I did not discuss pipe wrap. Uh, you can get, uh, many of you know, lots of noise from, from pipes and there are various solutions for that. One is to wrap them with pipe wrap, which is usually a combination of uh, mass loaded vinyl as well as uh, some absorptive uh, material, it might be fiberglass, acoustic fiberglass, and foil over the top of that. Uh, there's also air duct noise that uh, you can deal with wrapping the outside or uh, lining the inside, especially the, uh, the back end where it comes into the room uh, with different types of uh, sound absorbing materials. I almost forgot, I asked in the first video uh, what these items had in common. The, uh, the plate, the uh, dishwashing sponge, uh, the mass loaded vinyl, and the dog food or cat food. Um, uh, melamine is a substance that uh, we make plates out of. We, might, we make uh, formica type uh, uh, countertop out of, and we make uh, fireproof acoustical foam out of. Uh, a couple of years ago, the Chinese were caught uh, putting melamine in uh, dog food and cat food, killed uh, many uh, animals in the USA. They were also caught putting it in uh, uh, baby formula. And the reason they did that is it tricks the test equipment into thinking uh, that there's more protein than what there really is. Uh, since then, our test equipment is better and it will pick up those differences. Uh, so the, the plate, the sponge is made of melamine also, uh, uh, but I don't think you want to cover your walls with uh, dishwashing uh, sponges. You could, it would work. Uh, and the mass loaded barrier is a, a sound uh, attenuating material also. So that's that. Now let me get on with the rest of you. I did not cover your music practice room. That's a, another special area. Uh, deal with the studio people. I've talked to uh, people who sell band equipment here in, uh, in the malls and they're interested in what I have to say but uh, I'm not sure if I really want to start uh, working again. So I've tried to cover uh, noise in the home in your castle uh, where you enjoy much of your life. Um, I've talked about uh, noise barriers, uh, noise absorbers, noise uh, diffusers to some degree that has to do with your listening experience. And uh, covered some of the basics. I can't solve every one of your pr uh, particular and uh, unique uh, problems, but I, I gave you enough information so that you can start searching online. There are, there are dozens and dozens of sites online with lots of advice, uh, products to sell you, uh, it's going to depend upon what part of the world uh, you live in, what's available to you. Uh, I've told, given you my thoughts and my preferences. Uh, then it depends on uh, your budget, uh, your motivation, and uh, a little bit of ingenuity. So, with that having been said, uh, uh, please uh, like, subscribe if you haven't, uh, share. And we'll see you next time, hopefully.